Big Ten Player of the Year, unanimous first team All-American. We give you a look at the starting lineups now. Capital One starting lineups. And for Iowa, well, they get great balance, of course, outside of Clark. Sonano's a tremendous player, just about 26 on Ohio State. And a number of players shooting the ball very, very well for the Hawkeyes. They open up with the basketball here. We get things underway in the first quarter. Marshall's really been cooking for three-point land. And right on cue, she hits 37%. And for the Lady Lions, they are without Alexis Horn, their best offensive player, out with a knee. Garitano will have to be the go-to. Jen Pierre's 5-4, but actually outstanding rebounder. Yeah, no question about it. Alexis Horn, she is going to be missed in this game extensively with that knee injury. She injured it in the semifinals of the Southland Tournament. Horn at 5-9, averages about 12 points a game out with a knee injury. Certainly the best offensive player for the Lady Lions, 21-9. Winners of last week's Southland Conference Tournament Championship to get their first NCAA bid. Underneath Brown trying to spin it up there, but it's a huge size differential between these two teams. Clark on the attack and draws the foul. First team all Big Ten, obviously, with those numbers. And a top pick for National Player of the Year. 20 times she scored 25 points or more. Just remarkable. And she has averaged 27 points for three seasons. So she's been at the top of everyone's scout for three years, and no one can do anything with her. She has been phenomenal. Eight assists per game, as well as seven and a half rebounds. Sarah Cunningham will drop it in the 5'7 junior from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Well, a few players on this Lady Lions team. Not hailing from the state of Louisiana. Haley Gazzardo, the head coach. This team rallied twice in the Southland Conference Tournament for wins, and that went dead on. Right on the money. Well, she has her cape on early, and she replicated a shot right from there at shoot-around this morning and got up on the table and replicated what she would do to the crowd to egg them on as well. Cunningham, another good look, and knocks that one down. SLU's most improved player. She'll make about 38% from the three-point line. Inside. Nano can't get it to go. Clark with a little fall away. Got it. Oh, boy. The fader. She's got a quick seven. Yeah. But what a great pass by Clark. And downstairs, Chrissy Brown. And what will the team do without said player? And for me, you take Clayton Clark off the floor. I mean, that just creates... So many issues for Iowa. Tough shot there. Got it to go past Cunningham. She has different gears of speed, but burst of energy to the rim. Gutano with a nice give underneath. I don't care if you're the first, second, or third line of defense. That's a problem for you. She applies so much pressure with what she does with the ball. Clark with a triple. Yes. Wanted an opportunity to run it back. Sonano came back for her fifth year. Bell around it out. Now Falter looking inside. Sonato got great position and will draw the foul. It's the CC show. Caitlin Clark has her cape on early at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Knock it in. A triple on this one. Coming off that Big Ten title game. Talk about all those assists. I mean, she wound up with a triple-double. 17 assists in it. Oh, my goodness. And she probably could have had 18 because there was this phenomenal pass at that game day. And it was reminiscent to the one that she threw to Gabby Marshall. Up ahead, bounce pass, right on time and target for a teammate. Giratano getting inside for a couple. She's got to show up big today. 12 points a game, named the Southland Conference Tournament MVP. Inside, going to that left hand. Under duress. It's not like it's wide open shots down there. It's just to hold her position. Brown slamming on the brakes. The Molly Davis headband fan club is in Carver Hawkeye. It's a thing, big thing. Nice give underneath. She has been waiting to play that. She was behind Megan Gustafson, who was player of the year a couple of seasons back. But she has waited her turn in line like at an amusement park. And now she's been playing and riding that roller coaster the last couple of days. Davis with a hit. 
to make it 23-12, and that'll bring on a timeout. With 2.24 to go in the first. I really believe that shot, that moment, lifted her into a different category. Not to say she's the only great player in the country. That's not true. But she is the brightest star right now, and I think that shot elevated her to a different level. Absolutely, and then what she told our Holly Rowe right after that game, too, is I knew it was money when it left my hand, and she was <laughs> hugging her. It's fantastic, but Caitlin Clark, her heroics on that play pulled off, and then she got up on the table and egged on her fans here, started running all over the plates. The energy and the swagger that she plays with is just so much fun to watch and it gives the next generation of young basketball players boys and girls permission to play with passion when you see her playing in her purpose and all the work that she has put in to her game she is permitted she is allowed to do that and it's not being cocky it's being loving of the game give her that it's so great to see a player with all of her emotions on her sleeve. Everybody in the world knows she's going to take it. And she hits it. Great strike on the other. And it's Stokey able to lay that up in it for two. No doubt about it. I mean, I see a lot of Tarasi in her. Diana Tarasi's moxie and just her competitive will. Bell straight on with a triple. Buries that. Taylor Bell, the freshman. She was vital in the Lady Lions' magical run in the Southland Tournament. She had 22 points in the championship game. She's on the all-tournament team there. A vital part of their efficient offense. Martin open, yes. With a three. Gabe Martin knocks it down. She plays tough defense. She boards well. And she can knock down threes with ease. Cunningham with a jumper. Got it. Final seconds of the opening quarter here at Iowa City, 28-17, the Hawkeyes. Clark looking to get open. Well, she's open when she gets to midcourt. On the drive, off the iron. And that's how the first quarter comes to an end with Iowa in front, 28-17. I got my dancing shoes on, cheering you on, and of course, lining up. She's just the best. That's so awesome. I love her. I saw she was a cum laude graduate. I was a thank you laude graduate. <laughs> Clark on the spin inside and banks it in and draws a foul too. Foul on Cunningham. Well, that's what Caitlin Clark does. She's feisty defensively, corrals it, pushes tempo, put the spin move on it. Oh my, hangs in the air. And finishes. As much as the tournament is for the big guys, I mean, the South Carolinas, the Yukons, the Iowas. I mean, that's your goal throughout the summer and the workouts that you do in the fall and non-conference portion of the season. Clark again beating everyone to the opposite end for two. <laughs> Bell on a tough drive, draws the foul. Lady Lions, not a big scoring team necessarily, just seven times this season, scoring 70 or better. So they have to do it, but they made huge shots in their conference tournament. No question about it. I mean, they were down by 11 points. She needs an empty space on the shelf to roll into the basket for an easy two. The law firm, that's all I'm going to say. Bell with a jumper and swishes it in. The rookie for two. Warnock thought about it. Martin will shoot it. Much too strong. Beer wants to push the tempo. Shortest player on the floor. A really nice give. Ridiculous decibels in terms of the noise. Warnock, a triple. Right on the money. Five of eight now from three. Bell got a pretty fair look. Sonata just got 26 on Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship game. On a turnover. Brown bouncing for Pierre right back to her to lay it in. That's beautifully done by the Lady Lions. Mark bouncing for Stokey gets tied up on the double and travels with it. Lady Lions with a chance to get within 10. 
Or zoned by Iowa here. Near airborne. Yes! Tough shot for the 5 4 freshman out of Springfield, Louisiana. Uh, Iowa has the size advantage, but you can't measure heart. Sonano taking a little bump there, but it dropped in anyway. Lick of the wrist on that baby hook. Down to perfection. Bell off the fake and banks it in. I think you've got to be really impressed with Taylor Bell. No doubt. Clark. No. Fight for the rebound. Hawkeyes win it back. Downstairs, Sulky on a great give from the All-American. Giotano around it out. And Caitlin Clark is on triple double watch, and we're not even to halftime yet. Lane opens up, and she'll lay it in. Oh, well, you just can't sleep for a second. And you have to have your head on a swivel. Eh? The brothers. <laughs> Bell lost it. Clark ahead for Davidson. We'll lay it in on a foul two. Contact away from the ball designed to stop the clock. Excessive hard and or unnecessary contact. And I think that's what it was right there, the unnecessary contact. And they're going to have Kate Martin take the free throws on that. She's 85% at the line. 19 points in that game. And Wills and Bolt, very popular player among the Hawkeyes and the fans. 48-29. Solid spacing here by Iowa. Trying to get it high low or give an opportunity to drive it. Stokey does exactly that. Brown kicks it out. Cunningham's triple and absolutely buried it. Good looking shot. Just take a lot of threes, but she hits 38%. Yeah, she sized that one up. Great spacing. Got the ball reversed and got it kicked out. Pierre reaching in. Well, sometimes when you're you're small and quick like that, you have to give more space. So Davis to the line and outstanding foul shooter, 87%. Women's championship game is on the networks of ESPN through Sunday, April 2nd, when we crown a champion. Greenville, South Carolina, new this year yep. for the women's tournament. This one is the Seattle Regional. Four, Iowa City, Clark with it. Now Falter had it knocked away in a clean play, but Iowa will have the basketball. And they want to get that ball, get that push ahead pass and finish. Clark giving it up, but she's been doing a great job of that. O'Grady here on St. Patty's Day. The kick out for Brown, but too strong. And that will do it. Iowa chasing their 27th win of the season, coming off a championship in the Big Ten tournament. Well, to the Lady Lions credit, they have not yielded in this environment whatsoever. They have been built for this all season long. The word for them has been resilience all year. Underneath, Sonato gets him started here in the second half. Victory today for Lisa Bluter would be the 847 and a great coaching career for Iowa. Now 38 overall season for Lisa Bluter, 23rd on the sidelines with Iowa. The air slamming on those brakes and a foul on the play. Great thing she does where she puts everybody in a circle. Now a lot of coaches do that. They talk about the game plan, they talk about the opponent. She asks them oftentimes to close their eyes and visualize what they want to have happen in the game. So it's not uncommon. To watch them after one of the workouts, everyone's got their eyes closed, maybe laying on their backs, visualizing. She's a big, big fan of that. And I love to see that after shoot around today. They even did it. They sit crisscross applesauce in a circle, and they visualize what they want to get done for the game that day. And there's a lot to be said for that. Kelly with her third foul. Just getting started here, the third. 
It's a lot of wins. 846 W's for Coach Bluter. Clark, great dish. Sonata. Outstanding. In the corner, Cunningham knocks it down. Well, every move that she makes. Clark will loft it up there and swish it down to the three. Such a quick release. Gritano will draw the foul. Clark trying to slow her down. Caitlin Clark has not touched the ball for the last couple of possessions. She got it this time, and she loves drifting to her left. Boom. All net. She's always battling, too. She did not think she committed a foul there. Well, she's the ultimate competitor, and you have to appreciate that in her. In terms of what she brings to the floor, that fire in the belly. Marshall up top. Pass did get there. The basket did not. But Stokey underneath will draw the foul. Stokey out of nearby Washington High and Cedar Rapids. 45% from the free throw line. She's had games this year where she's been frustratingly inefficient from there. But the fans are giving her a lot of love. Flowers, a determined dribble on the kick off Bell. And out it goes back over to the Hawkeyes. I mean... You have Megan Gustafson's number retired in the building. She was the player of the year, her senior season, when they went to the Elite Eight just a handful of seasons ago. Warnock on the move. And gets it to go plus one. Strong. Gets tangled up here, powers through right there, and somehow, some way, gets it to go in. She's not coming back for her fifth year because she's going to dental school. So that's a decision that she recently told everyone, and that was that was quite something beautiful. No, with a jumper, no. And the Hawkeyes take it back to number two seed here. Number two seed. A lot of people were discussing whether they could have received the number one seed for what they were able to do. And oh, right, Stucky really working, banked it in. She earned that one. She, that inside game. Yeah, she has a lot of traction with the minutes that she has earned this year. Rutano with a little bump couldn't get it to drop. And Bell commits a foul, and that's an unfortunate foul. So she came up huge to earn that bid. First time ever in the tournament. Defensively, she's brought a lot of firepower to the court in this game. Stokey with one of two. Another three minutes to go in the third. Harvey with a line driver that won't fall. One and done. The winner of this game will take on Georgia on Sunday. Lead here for Stokey. Lady Bulldogs with a nice win over FSU earlier today on this floor. Sonano, well, you're not going to move her down there. No. You talk about Sonano now. If they move on and play on Sunday, it's going to be her last home game. And she was talking about, you know, will you be thinking about the emotions to tie up here? And I think as a competitor, you don't want to entertain losing. You don't want to entertain the last of anything. You just want to be in the moment. And that's that mental fortitude that you need to compete at your highest level and be a star in your role. Inside, Clark will add to the total. It's really increased the pace of play for Iowa this year. Fight for the rebound, controlled by Southeastern Louisiana. Out for Harvey, couldn't get a handle on the shot. 73 to 38, so this has turned into the runaway that was predicted. You've got a very undersized team, and there's another basket for Sonata. Very undersized in the Lady Lions. Cunningham launches up. And that one's going to get out. She has been pretty darn good today. Last seconds here, the third. Clark will dump it down for Sonata. She'll drive and score again. 
They set that up beautifully. That's the end of the third quarter. Their staunch defense is something that's going to be intriguing to watch against this high-powered Iowa offense. Which is number one in the country. And points per game, Caitlin Clark with 24 along with 11 assists and 8 rebounds. I mean, Iowa is just a machine, and I've said it before, it's just their continuity, their chemistry, the ability to know each other so well with returning five starters for the three years in a row. A little miscue on that one. <laughs> you trust her decisions, though, that she's going to make more rewards than risk when she has the basketball in her hands. And at least has been right. <laughs> a lot of times. <laughs> of time. Absolutely. Martin outside the three. Marshall will back it away. Sonato, great position again. And when she gets that low, forget it, it's lights out. You know, Rebecca Lobos talked about, you know, the first time she started playing college basketball, it was a revelation. She had to get down and really get deep in there and really drive the opponent back. You know, it takes a little while to learn that. Absolutely. And it takes a little while to learn to be loose on defense in the post as well. I mean, offense, yes, you have to hold your seal and wait for the ball to get to your hand before you make your move. But on the defensive end, boy, if you get stuck or wedged in there, that's, that's a long night. But, yeah, I have to learn that on the defensive end. I have to try to block everything, but to get loose and get around and get a steal instead. Clark on the drive, blocked. And on the play by Bell. And then an intentional. Take a look. Here comes Clark. I think that's what saves her, that she made a play on the ball, but there was extra contact above the shoulders, and they're going to leave it as an intentional foul. So Clark at the line, where she makes 83%. Makes the pair, and with that second one, she's out. And the day is done for the freshman, Taylor Bell, who had some really, really good moments in this game, two intentionals aside, but that cost her the rest of the afternoon. Some handshakes for the Iowa players on the bench on the way out. Maybe felt a little remorseful with the contact that she made there on Clark, but in the first half, she had that same kind of contact on Molly Davis. Also up on the head. Spelt the underneath. Boy, that's a sweet move. I mean, she is just so solid in terms of her footwork on the interior. Jan Jensen, the assistant coach at Iowa, is the post coach. And she takes pride in teaching the fundamentals, the basics on the interior play for the Hawkeyes. It's going to get a foul here on the Hawkeyes and on Warnock. I think you're going to see Lisa go to the bench here as Clark comes out. 12 assists, 26.7 rebounds. <laughs> like an average day I mean right can you be consistent in your skill set with your opponents knowing what they need to take away and they can't do it well that's when you know there's a different level to that play so we can look ahead now to what's coming up on Sunday afternoon on ABC it's going to be Iowa taking on Georgia Georgia tremendous defensive opponent they play suffocating defense and as you look ahead to that matchup, and, you know, Georgia's got to be thinking as we speak, you know, how do we slow down number 22? What do we do at number 25? Cunningham in transition, can't get it to drop. So I will be win number 27. Southeastern Louisiana. Will fall to 21 and 10. With Brady on the strike, give her six points today. Eighty-seven to forty-one. 
Not a seat to be had. Totally sold out here at Carver Hawkeye Arena. It's been one of the really fascinating stories of you know the first round, the first and second round, how quickly every seat went here. That's going to be banked in. Come on now. <laughs> hey, this is the microcosm of what has happened here at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Lettering from way downtown. Yeah. Last work. They hit 90. Dunningham's jumper won't fall. Seven threes have gone in for the Hawkeyes in this one. But that one was the most dramatic by far. Pierre beating the field. And we'll lay it in. She's been fun to watch. Southeastern team, Southeastern Louisiana team, they have no seniors. So this is a young team, and we've called out a lot of freshmen. McCabe will drill that one. Another one. Taylor McCabe, a freshman. But going back to the Lady Lions not having any seniors, I mean, this is a young team. We've talked about how many freshmen have performed well here in this contest. But you have to be encouraged that you have this experience because oh, yeah. you can't replicate this. Experience this environment here on the road first round of the NCAA tournament your first time ever to do that I mean, there's a lot of reward that you could pay off Moving forward for their team. It's a wonderful accomplishment for the Lady Lions Iowa continues to pour it on 95 to 43 Iowa rolls at home in front of the sellout And it is on to round number two for Lisa Bluter and the Hawkeyes. It's Georgia next on Sunday afternoon. Teamwork makes the dream work for the Iowa Hawkeyes. 27 assists on 36 made shots.